You have your A-level chemistry paper 2 exam coming up. This video is going to be some last minute tips for that exam. I'm going to tell you some specific things based on the topics within this paper that will definitely help you in making sure that when you do walk into your exam, you feel a little bit more confident and you are able to get a couple marks just straight away. So let's just get straight on with it. Okay, so firstly, the paper 2 exam is the organic and physical chemistry paper. So you did all your inorganic within the first paper. I've heard that apparently there was a lot of inorganic in that paper, but I can forget about that and we're going to focus on the organic side and obviously a few physical topics as well come up again this year. The physical topics within this paper is going to be amount of substance, bonding, energetics, kinetics, so kinetics is like rates of reaction, equilibrium and obviously the required practical skills that fall within any of those as well. So in terms of what I want you to do, the first thing is really clear the mechanisms should be literally muscle memory to you at this point. So what I want you to do in those last couple minutes before your exam is to just rewrite mechanisms over and over again. What I personally did was I had a piece of paper where I wrote all the different mechanisms out and I just kept on rewriting them on that paper as much as I could just so all of those were in my head because these are the free marks that you can get all the mechanism questions are just free marks they're always the same thing over and over again in terms of the things that you should really look out for obviously knowing how to draw the mechanisms are really important that's always going to get you like four or five marks each time so it's just it's so many free marks just like that but do make sure that when you are drawing these mechanisms you're really really careful and you make sure that you show any signs that you need to so any negative positive signs you do not have to show delta negative and delta positive unless you're drawing like hydrogen bonding or something but within your actual mechanism drawing so if you're doing like an electrophilic addition or something like that you don't have to show delta positive and delta negative because if you do decide to show it and you get it wrong then you're going to lose a mark there's no point risking you losing a mark okay back to the mechanisms another thing that you do need to be really familiar with with a lot of these mechanisms is the reagents that are used the conditions that it happens in and the role of certain ions so a lot of the questions usually especially if you've been doing past paper questions on these which i really really recommend for you to do find any past paper questions and just do them as many of them as you can that should genuinely be all your revision right now always comes up on top of drawing is obviously naming the mechanism that's always a mark but then sometimes they like to ask you about the conditions for those mechanisms so in some mechanisms it's a bit more important than other ones the most important one that I can always remember is the one in nucleophilic substitution where if you have hydroxide ions you have your OH minus if that's an aqueous you have a nucleophilic substitution happening but if that's in a ethanolic reaction then you change that to an elimination now that's really really important and that's something that you probably already know but I just want to refresh it in your mind just in case you've forgotten now another thing that they like to ask as well sometimes is they like to say what is the role of the OH minus ions and what you need to say is that they act as a base that's literally all you have to say so if that's a mark just write that down they always ask the stuff in the same way every single time just make sure you're really familiar with the different reagents that are used the conditions that they're used in any sort of products that are formed any color changes maybe it really depends on the different topics because in some ones the color change is more important than other ones so for example really common color change is the one in potassium dichromate going from orange to green spend a good chunk of your time doing mechanisms whether or not you know them or you don't they're really easy to forget and they're really easy to mess up but also if you do get them there's so many marks and they just give you a good head start for the paper from the very beginning and now adding on to the idea of mechanisms each one of these mechanisms are within certain topics of organic right and within each of these topics you have very common question types that come out of these mechanism questions so some of the ones that always like to come up are things like electrophilic addition okay you know how you get major products forming and you have minor products forming there's always a really common three mark question that asks about this and asks why is it that this is the major product and this isn't and you have to talk about the carbocations being more stable and you talk about how like the tertiary one is more stable than the primary or the secondary one but it's not just this question there's a lot of questions around every single one of the mechanisms that have really really similar mark schemes that always come up every single year and if you want to do practice in making sure that you know these questions and you know that you're going to get them right what i want you to do is do questions based on the topics within the mechanisms so for example if you're doing nucleophilic substitution questions to find the questions around it go to the topic that you find nucleophilic substitution in and do questions based on that basically what I want you to be doing is as many exam questions as possible for each one of these topics so that not only your mechanisms get better but also the common question types that come around them as well chemistry has the most common mark schemes and the most repetitive mark schemes of all the subjects that I know and this is something I say within every single one of my videos what you should be doing as your last minute revision is those exam questions all the time as many of them as you can the more exam questions you do you're going to get a direct correlation in how many exam questions you do and how many you get right in the actual thing 
because for every question that you get wrong when you're practicing, that's another question that you're not going to get wrong within the exam itself. So that's the way I like to think about it. The more questions you get wrong now, the less questions you get wrong in the exam itself. So you want to get these questions wrong now so you don't get them wrong in the exam. Because a lot of them literally repeat word for word from the practice questions that you do from the past papers straight into the new paper, straight into the 2025 one that you're going to be getting. There's always going to be a question on organic analysis. It comes up every single year. Sometimes it's a full six marks. Sometimes it's only a couple of marks. But it's just something that is so easy, but it's something you do need to go over. So for example, the different tests that you find for every single different functional group that there is. So like the bromine water test for alkenes, stuff like that, you need to know the color changes and the tests for everything. Go over them also with your mechanisms one last time, make sure that you know all of them too. But sometimes you get full six marks on those kind of questions where they give you like three different things, three, four different compounds. Maybe they do infrared spectroscopy on them, stuff like that. And they ask you to basically deduce what the different compounds are and which one's which. For these type of questions, make sure that all your reasoning is really, really clear. So especially for those six markers, make sure that you write every single thing like fully state the obvious okay this is also very important in nmr which we'll get to as well but you're really trying to state the obvious so let's just talk a bit about nmr this is something that i feel like everyone always hates and everyone always struggles with and what i personally would say is that if you do get an NMR question, especially if it's a big chunky one, just leave it to the end. Please be wary of the amount of time you spend on the NMR question because a lot of the times there'd be really little marks for how much time you have to spend to get the correct answer. This topic gave me so much difficulty within my exam and it's the reason that everything just went to shambles because I spent way too long on this question and this is something I don't want you to do. I'm warning you from personal experience, if you get an NMR question and especially if it starts to confuse you because you realize that you're spending a little too long on this, just please skip it and please worry about it at the end after you've done the rest of the paper. For me, I had an NMR question like somewhere in the middle and I spent so long on it that I had to rush the rest of the questions. So that's just something I really want to make clear to you. Please don't do what I did. And um, apart from that, I genuinely don't have anything else to say. So in terms of what you should really focus on is learning those mechanisms, obviously going over them, but doing as many exam questions as you can. In terms of the practicals as well within this topic, please go over the methods for them. There's one really, really obvious one within this paper, but I don't know why, but it just always comes up, is the aspirin practical. And they're the exact same six marks every single time. I'll put that here as well for you but please memorize that. Um, just memorize as many six markers as you can, especially for any of the practical based ones. Don't be forward in thinking that because it's paper two and not paper three, you're not gonna get practical questions. You can very easily get a six marker on aspirin because that's what I got in my exam. Don't think that you're not gonna get one as well. Obviously, because it did come up last year, it's probably quite unlikely for it to come up as a full six marker this year, but please still learn the mark scheme just in case. Do go over those practicals as well, but focus mainly on those mechanisms, on those tests, on those color changes and those conditions, and just do as many questions as you can. And apart from that, I just wanna say good luck and see you guys very soon. Bye.